Do you remember the first time you came to me? No, I don't, no. No, you wanted me to teach you real estate. Oh, no, that was further down the road. When I first, you, you're you acting didn't like bring... you remember, but you don't remember. No, okay, well, tell me. You tell me. Well, I, I met you when I was younger, when we, when we were playing hockey, but it was when I got a little bit older, started working. I was in my early 20s that I approached you about real estate. Yeah, but you still and bring it up at hockey. I approached you about real estate for buying my first home and told you that oh. I had gone to see a home here in Moncton with a, a local real estate agent at the time, and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Rob Bridges here, Moncton, Brunswick, building bridges. We have longtime real estate agent, good friend of mine, Jeremy McCabe. Thanks for having me on. I didn't want to mention all the awards and all that stuff, because really nobody, does anybody care about all that stuff? I don't know. I, I, uh, I guess it's a, uh, it's unlike you not to mention them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because I know you so well. If okay. People, if people don't know us, we work together a lot, and we I've known you since you were 14, 15. Yeah, I want to say 15. Yeah, probably 15, 16 years old when we met playing hockey. Yeah, we were. I was playing hockey with the firefighters, and, and yes. you were always there. My father was a firefighter, and I used yeah. to come out at, uh, at Christmas break and uh, March break or whenever I could to, to go out and play with the guys. Yeah. So and I you know, know what I remember the most is you... I didn't know what to think of it, but you're always staring at me. <laughs> and and later you came to me. Do you remember the first time you came to me? No, I don't. No. No, you wanted me to teach you real estate. Oh no, that was further down the road. When I you, you're you acting like you remember, but you don't remember. No, okay, well tell me. You tell me. Well, I, I met you when I was younger, when we, when we were playing hockey. But it was when I got a little bit older, started working. I was in my early twenties that I approached you about real estate. Yeah, but you still and bring it up at hockey. I approached you about real estate for buying my first home and told you that oh. I had gone to see a home here in Moncton with a, a local real estate agent at the time. And you were like, whoa, 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 whoa. And you said, you come out and see houses with me. And then we started talking. And that's how I kind of got led down the road of, uh, of investment. Did I lock down the and sale? That's what I want to know. You did, yeah, you did. Yeah, stole the sale from the other agent. I which I had no commitment with no, at the time. No, you did but, not have you know. a commitment. That, does, that sounds bad. <laughs> no, I know. And it's an agent yeah. that uh, is, a, is a pretty well-respected agent. And, uh, and you've actually said a lot of nice things about her uh, through the course. Okay, of well, so. we're not going to bring it up who it was because <laughs> I don't even remember anything or anybody. Yes. You remember who it was? Who the other agent was? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. Wow. But you told me not to bring it up. But that's how I. That's how we kind of got on the real estate topic. But I, I knew you was a hockey player. Yeah. And uh, well, you know what? I, then I, I'm linking it all together because I remember you kind of talking to me a little bit, and maybe your dad mentioned to me. Did you always have a fascination with real estate? Uh, I probably always had an interest in business, just in general. I, uh, but real estate was certainly always had had intrigued me, and and uh, I was fortunate enough that I was able to buy my first home at a younger age, and that's what kind of got me. Got me started and into the industry. And then if you remember, because clearly you don't. I, 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 tell we went, me, tell we went, me. <laughs> we went from there. Uh, I had bought my first property and then kind of got into the, the investment side of real estate slowly and, and with some smaller properties. And then eventually you said, you know, would you be interested in sales? And uh, at first I remember, and you probably do too, I was a little bit uh, indecisive on whether or not it would be a good idea. And it probably took me a couple of years. Uh, I remember this, yes. Yeah, I was working a full-time job at the time. It was frustrating. And, yeah, so uh, that's how it, uh, how it all started. He was the scaredest buyer ever, ever. But the way it used to be done was very intimidating. You guys used to have the old accordion, the accordion uh, purchase and sales agreement there that would come out, stretch right out six pages wide. You'd lay that down on the table. You sit that down in front of a 24 year old or a 22 year old yeah, yeah, I mean, okay, at the well, time. And let's get one thing straight. The six pages only happened lately. It was two pages. It was two it pages. Was two, it unfolded into two pages. Yeah, and you had the carbon copies on both sides. Yes. And that, yeah, well, we shouldn't yeah. talk too much about that because that really dates you. Uh, oh no, when I first came out, when <laughs> I first started selling real estate, I would go to the office and get the little paper out of the sleeve. You get your little messages. I remember when the cell phone came out. And it was like, this is incredible. I don't always have to go back to the shop. But then you had to record your minutes and you didn't yes. want to go over and you had your fab five and, you know, your favorite yeah. five people you could call. And yeah, I, I go way back. And real estate uh, to buy a house was one page. Now it's six, six pages and every form you could dream of, you had to disclose I have blue eyes and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. We should talk about that one day, that why in Canada do we need a lawyer? Well, in New Brunswick especially. You need a lawyer. In the States, Quebec, you just they can use a notary. And, and get through without the lawyer, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you own investment properties. We're allowed to talk about that? Allowed to talk about well, it. No, no, what we, that's not what we're here. Uh, we want to talk about private for sales, and people should be doing private for sales, uh, listing with an agent, all that stuff. And and this is not a promotion to list with an agent. This is We are going to just talk about it. Mm -hmm. We 
are not just because I'm a licensed agent. So are you? Yes, I am. Yeah. Yep. And I flip homes, but we are not canvassing for business. This is just a general talk about about real estate. Real yeah, estate. But absolutely. you, I want to give people credibility, or you credibility to the people. You own investment property. I do have some investment properties. Yeah. So I do have the mix of the investment world and uh, you know a small portfolio of investment properties, and as well do the real estate sales. So. Yeah, I do have uh, do have some experience in both of, of those. And one thing you do more than me is commercial. Yeah, I do a little bit of commercial yeah, as well. I, I yeah. don't. Uh, I like people, and I find the commercial real estate aspect is not as fun. Like well, I like joking around and, and getting to know my clients. And commercial yes. people are like, write it down. This is what I want. Oh, like, you don't like, like joking around. Not gonna happen. I love joking yeah, too yeah. much. Well, oh. that's the nice thing about real estate. There's <laughs> all kinds of different avenues and opportunities, and it's a it's a diverse uh, industry. So you know they can go a whole bunch of different paths. And, it's nice that you can, you know, you take a look at some, some people specialize in investment property, other people specialize in residential sales, and other people specialize in industrial, commercial, and there's, yeah. it's nice that the way. The people that specialize in industrial and commercial, I think they have a problem. <laughs> I don't get Maybe it. they do. Oh, I do it, I, I get it, I get it. Uh, some of the commercial guys love it. Okay, should a person, or can a person sell their home privately? Absolutely they can. In fact, uh, I, I, it sounds strange to say it, but as an agent, I, I don't outright discourage it. Um, I don't think that there's any harm in trying because I think that people sometimes that's the best way to see the reality of selling your own your you know your home yourself. Uh, that's one way to get exposed to it. I also don't it, and I also don't discourage it because sometimes it is possible to sell it yourself. Oh, I think it's definitely possible. And whether it is, yeah, and I've seen several times where it's worked out for the uh, for the seller, and they've used me as their their agent to to buy the next home, and I've never been uh, you know to go against them in a very very negative way. And I think you may have even told me that you know taking the aggressive approach is not always the best way to go about it, and to let people kind of find out for themselves. And that's uh, yeah. No, I no I agree because I we can talk about that a bit later. Tactics some agents use to get private for sales to list with an agent. Yes, and I don't agree with them. We'll get into that after. Okay, because I I was never that approach. Even if I lost a, a listing or a buyer or something, I never got upset. Mm -hmm. I, whatever you got to do, it's your decision. And a lot of them came back. Exactly. You and get upset and tell them off. They ain't ever coming back. And that's exactly what I meant by like that aggressive, pushy approach. Is that yeah. it's sometimes, like I said, it's not. It's a, it's a learning opportunity. And you know, and if you are fortunate enough that you do end up selling your house on your own, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. And I think the stat at one point, which I might be wrong in quoting it, was like eighty or eighty-five percent of private sales eventually turn back to the real estate industry and end up going on MLS and, and, and selling in the end that way. Yeah. So I don't see a need to discourage it. If it works out, then great. It's, you know, as long as they were, you know, they were cautious or, or, or really looked out for themselves as far as being accurate on the list price, making sure that they were getting sufficient money for their home and, uh, and that everything worked out in that Well, sense. that's one thing. I, I, I don't laugh, but I, if I hear somebody, I sold my house privately and I did it in like three hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't need, a real estate agent, and I'm gonna give you tips in a minute on how to sell your house privately, so this is not a pro, like you need an agent, but if you sold your house privately in three hours, mm -hmm. you probably lost 15, 20% of what you could have made, even with a commission, the death word commission. Mm, that's a scary word for some. Oh, yes. it is, it is, but if you look at it the yeah. right way, yeah, it's not sure. a bad word, but if you wanna sell your house privately, I wanna tell what I think the biggest mistake if you want to do it, the things to do. What do you think a mistake is it? When people put their house for sale privately, what is a mistake? Can you think of anything? In what sense do you mean a mistake? Like in the actual preparation of listing the property themselves, you mean? Yeah, yeah, what are, okay, let's give some tips on what they should do. Well, certainly certainly one thing right off the bat, I mean, as is, is we just talked about is pricing. That can be a huge mistake if you're not informed about the market. I mean, that's the whole reason for hiring a real estate professional, a professional salesperson, is because they're gonna do you know, a market analysis and they're gonna compare recent sales. They're gonna be able to look at a database of, of accurate sale prices for you know, direct comparable properties and they're gonna be able to give you that. So you know, yes, there are certain tools that and the average- more and more now. Yeah, well, there's certain tools now that yep. the average citizen has access to. Like New Brunswick, I believe any property sold after 2009 is listed on a provincial website that you can reference. But again, it's not the same. You're not seeing the listing, what the house looked like inside, what you know, yeah. all the different characteristics you're seeing in overview, and it's not it's not the same tools that we have. So that's one risk certainly is not being accurate in pricing With your home. Pricing. That's the, uh, to me that would be the biggest risk. You could get into other stuff now, like you know us. You know, I know yourself as well, and your in your business of flipping homes. I mean, your photography, m you know, multimedia is huge today. Yeah. There's lots of talk about people that don't even attend open houses anymore because the younger generation relies so much on pictures. Now they still got to go through the house. Yeah. I don't think it's ever going to turn fully on this. 
it's it's the same thing as. I guess not that they're uh, not going to go I'm, to the house, but I mean, when you host an open house today, we still get traffic. It's a nice day in the summer, and people are out going yeah. and checking out places. But yeah, as yeah, you know, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. A serious buyer is going to come into the house. So I, you play a lot of hockey. I play a lot. Of, uh, I play a lot of hockey. Are you going to buy a stick online without going to try it out? Feel it, touch it? Absolutely not. But I'll yeah. tell you what the difference is, and what I'm trying to say. If we're <laughs> going to use that analogy of hockey, <laughs> is that I'm going to do my research at home, and I'm going to look at that stick. And I'm going to watch players that use that stick. I'm going to read about who uses it, what its advantages and disadvantages are. And then I'm going to go to the store that I know, that, that I know sells it for the price, for the best price, because I can do all that research from home. Yeah. And then I'm going to go check it out, which would make me a serious, okay. qualified buyer. Fine. Because so in I'm my day, we drove from store to store to store to store to store to store. Yeah, uphill, both yeah. ways, in a snowstorm. Yeah, that's what you guys always say. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth. People rely a lot on good quality multimedia, videos, pictures, you know, professional photography is almost a, it's a given now with any professional real estate agent that we have a photographer or trained to take professional like or good quality yeah. photographs. You know, we're not using the uh, the iPhones now to take pictures. So. Well, you can. You can, yes. You can. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's one thing, before I give you the two tips that I think you should do if you're going to sell your house privately and they're good, they're really good. Uh, it's not just a, a fluff to get you to watch a show. It's not a joke. Um, I What I don't like is when the pictures are so good and they're widened and touched up and buyers, yes. it looks amazing. And yeah. then you go in the house and they're disappointed. Yeah. I would almost rather pictures be good but not perfection. And then the buyer goes into the house and they're excited. It's better than the pictures. Yes. So there's a fine line between having amazing pictures but not ugly pictures. Like put your toilet seat down, put your laundry away, make your bed, take yeah, but that wouldn't Structure be realistic if you made your bed and you put all your laundry away. No, I do. I, okay. I, I, I'm not. I'm a clean guy. I'm gonna vacuum before I wash the TV. I'm just teasing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I. I but it's a very good point you bring up, though, for sure, because you know, you know, pictures can make things look a lot better than they are, or they yeah. can actually make them look a lot worse than they are too. And and now today with the, the, the lens technology, and you have a lot of experience with that. You know, the rooms look twice as big, and yeah. you go in there, and you can the two, you can't even be in there in the same room with the client. Yeah, we can't even get in a room, but in a picture, we can have a pool table in here. Yeah, wide angle lenses can make a four by five bathroom look awfully big. Yes, yeah, you can have a party in there. You're right. Bathroom no, that's a that's an excellent point. Is to make sure that things look realistic. And the, the professional photographer that I use for all my listings, that's a big part of the reason why I continue to go with him, is because Great. he takes realistic, high quality pictures, as opposed to sometimes exaggerating something that. Uh, that's going to be in, a, in essence not not false advertising, but it's going to give a false impression of what the reality is. So yeah. my number one thing that sellers should do, in my opinion, mm -hmm. you know, is when the buyer shows up at the door, don't follow them around. Yeah, find a way to give them some privacy. Yeah, don't follow them around. If you're going to follow them around and, and uh, get in their space and show them every door and hinge, and it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And the easiest not, why why doesn't that work? Well, the easiest way to do it is to just put yourself in their shoes. Picture yourself and your loved one or you and your family or whoever you're bringing. You want to be able to visualize yourselves in that home. And the only way to do that is to not be surrounded by the people that, number one, own them. Even as an agent, I don't follow my clients around. And it's because you want to be able to yeah. not only visualize yourself in the home, but you want to be able to speak freely too. And imagine put yourself, putting yourself in the buyer's shoes. Would you want the seller to be right there when you say, man, I can't believe they picked that color for this room or I can't believe that they went yeah. with this you know, color tile, this looks terrible, and it's, if we buy this house, we're tearing this out tomorrow. You're never going to say that in front of, well, no, some people might, no. but the majority of people wouldn't. And it doesn't, if, you're fo if you follow them around, I know you're excited and you got a buyer and you want to show them how beautiful it is and how much your family enjoyed it yes. and everything, but you actually want them to think about how much they and their family can enjoy the house. They don't want to think about your family, no offense. Yeah, and your enthusiasm is not going to sell the home to them. Of course, you're attached to your Their home. Their enthusiasm with each other, whoever yes. they are. And level of comfort in your home, yeah, exactly. Yeah, level of comfort. If they feel awkward, they associate that with the house. Absolutely. So their level of comfort, their ability to bond together in the house and talk about all the assets that they love mm -hmm. is what's going to sell the house. So leave them alone. Find a way to leave them alone. And if you're a new agent, uh, you want to follow them around, right? You do, but you, you, you can't. You, you can't do it. Yeah. No, not even, not even as an agent. Absolutely you, not. You'll still sell houses, but if you yeah. want to sell more houses, let them develop a love for mm -hmm. the house. The house is the house. Yeah. And I've always found, too, if they want your opinion or if they want you right there, they're going to let you know. It's one of those things that you, you're not going to have to guess it. Yeah. You're better off just giving them their space and be there when they want questions answered. And sometimes they'll be like, no, we want you to follow us around. We want, and if that's the case, then absolutely you do what your, client, your clients want you to do. But uh, giving them privacy is definitely the best practice. Good. 
So that's, that's something to really consider if you're going to sell your house privately. The next one, if you're going to sell your house privately, if you list it with a for sale by owner company. Okay. Yeah. And we're not bashing anybody. Mm -hmm. These are all options out there. What do you think? How does that play in our real estate business? Because the option is privately, 100%. There's the for sale by owner company that you give a large amount of money to and never get it back, regardless if it sells or not. And then there's the real estate agent. The for sale by owner company, What are is there any advantages to it? Well, I think that they, the way that they kind of sell their product is that they're going to be able to help you price your home. That's one. So they draw on some resources. I don't know exactly where they get a lot of their information. But that's one that they do, they, you know, they, and they help prepare, um, you know, a brochure, that type of paperwork that you can leave behind. They have the before website. showing. They've they got a website to advertise yeah. it. They can give you the location. So it's, it's, there are probably some advantages, but like you just mentioned, an important thing there, you're paying, from what I understand, a big upfront fee with no guarantee of a sale. And, you know, if you think of it from a real estate agent's perspective, that doesn't make a lot of sense, although it would be fantastic, but that's not how it works for us is that, you know, we go ahead and we do all that work as a real estate agent and we only get paid once we sell your home. Yeah. And, and if that's, we sell the house. Yeah, that's what I mean. If, yeah. if, yeah, but you want to say once you sell the home, cause you know, you're yeah, yeah, going to go in there good, confident. That's and you're a good gonna, line. Yeah. Once we sell your home, yeah, not if. Who wants to hear well, if? I know yeah. it, it's true. Uh, I guess uh, my second point that I was going to get to is if you're going to do a hundred percent for sale by owner, by yourself, mm -hmm. right? No agents, no third party is like we talked about getting decent pictures. Yes. Updating them on Craigslist, Kijiji, uh, Facebook Marketplace, whatever options you have, and you gotta change it all the time. You gotta change it all the time. Every day, refresh it, change it, put a different picture as the, the lead picture. And I don't, personally, I don't like nine pages of information. Like people will write sometimes, Don't you don't need to write a book, I think you just need Pinpoints, you, you just want to catch their interest, right? Yeah, exactly. So you keep it clean. You, you know, use some, yes. well, you can use it this very similar, I guess, in the, to the way that we would market it is where you're putting a short write up followed by some bullet points exactly. that are kind of pointing out the key features. And you've probably, I mean, you've been in this industry a lot longer than me, but you've probably had several clients that want you to write the novel. Oh, I don't take them as clients. And you know, that they, they want to edit your novel that you've just written. And, then, yeah. and I mean, it's, it, you, you can, kind of understand what, where they're coming from. Oh, we put I, them in their, you know, in their shoes and they think that they're going to read because that you're, you're bringing back again that emotional connection that they have to their own home. So when they, they want to read this fairy tale or this beautiful story about their house, but again, in today's world and technology and people are skimming through stuff, it's pictures, good exactly. quality pictures. You said it right there. Yeah. They're skimming through stuff. You've got to catch their attention. You've got to catch it. You could write in your write-up that you own 50 pounds of bullion gold. Is that how you say it? I don't know. There's don't bricks know. of gold in the basement that are staying there for free, yeah. but they ain't going to read it. That's They're true. not going to read it because it's too, it's too much. It's too long. Yeah. You can tell them that once you catch them Yes. and I'll buy that house. Yeah. So just send me a private message and now to say you wouldn't, yeah, now to say you wouldn't <laughs> list with clients like that, that might be a little bit extreme because normally you can uh, inform them, but you can inform them, at least in my experience that, you know, exactly what we just talked about, that not everybody has time to read through, you know, the two paragraph description. They want to see good pictures and they want to see what's in the house and it doesn't need to be done through a story. It should be done in bullet points bullet. and that's bang, it. Bang, bang, exactly. bang. Stuff that's going to catch their eye. Yeah, the keep important it simple. stuff, then we can share that. Then if you're selling privately, once you get them on the phone, don't try to sell the house on the phone. They already called you. Just, you know, when would you like to come see it? Answer their questions and then kind of when would you like to come see the house? That's the next step. Mm -hmm. you, you can't go full circle in a phone call either. So it's step by step. So you do a bullet point ad, good pictures, and when they call, just try to get them into the house. Tell them, look, when you get here, I'm going to step out. I don't know if I tell them that on the phone, now that you say that. No, and the, the reality is too, in today's market, I don't know what it's like in other markets, but certainly where we work as real estate agents, that oftentimes the showings for these, for sale by owners or private sales, they're usually escorted by another agent, typically. So Sometimes. Not all the time, I know, but the, I would say the majority of times now is that the, most of the buyer clients are coming in with representation, and that might be how the deal is facilitated later down, down yeah. the line, but at least that they've got somebody with them that works in the industry. Does, should a private for sale person turn down the showing with the agent because they don't want to pay if there's a commission of some sort? 
Absolutely not, because the majority of agents are going to work just for the buyer. There's going to be, typically, you'll see a, a, a commission structure that's a little bit different than what we're used to, that might be a little bit more favorable to the seller, given the fact that they're selling the home privately, but then you also have yeah. This, you know, you also have that level of professionalism that is still involved in the sale. So, my my thing is don't don't say yes or no right away until all the terms are laid out on the table. Until you see all the terms of the whole deal with a realtor or not a realtor, mm -hmm. you can't make a decision. So yeah, show them the house. Get an agent, sure. Yeah. Show your house. Show it until all the terms are laid out. <coughs> it may be amazing. The mm -hmm. terms. Mm -hmm. You on a short closing, long closing, whatever it is, they may honor all, it may be perfect for you. You don't know until you have all the terms. The commission might not even come into play because who knows? Yeah. You and don't know until. And at the end of the day, as a seller, you're the boss. Whether you represent yeah. it, you're not represented, you're, you're selling privately. Like you said, once you see everything, it's your decision at the end of the day. You own the home. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Exactly. Uh, do you recommend, would you recommend to a loved one a family member to go with a third party, like those kind of like in between real estate companies. Uh, what do you call them? They, I don't know what the term help. is without mentioning I, yeah, I don't specific say companies. companies of course, yeah. there's, a, there's a couple. Uh, these companies that do the upfront fee that you may never get back. Those companies, would you ever let a family member go there? Well, of course, I, I mean, it wouldn't be my first suggestion. I mean, I'm a, I'm a professional. But if they didn't want to go with an agent, what would you do? For me, I, mean, I, I don't want to discourage them from going. I mean, I'd let people make the choice that they wanted to make, but at the end of the day, the way I see it is that you're just as, you're just as well off, really, if you really put the time and effort into it to put it on you know, various private listing like sites said, and that type of thing. Yeah, I, I would be, I'd be lying if I, point if I was, yeah. yeah. Point form right up. Change the yeah. front picture, put good pictures. Absolutely. Change it right up a little bit. Put it on yeah. here, put it on there. Mm -hmm. Take the half an hour a day, switch it up. Yeah. Place it in different places, share it on mm -hmm. different social media platforms. Yeah. If you have the time, and most people are pretty well versed at that today, anyway, to try, you know, enough to get by to, to make that ad and to make it clean and look good on their own. I mean, I'm sure there's certain ap applications where those other companies, you know, a third party or uh, how better to describe them, maybe they are better. You know, if somebody isn't very good with the internet or with that, yeah. you know, there's there's a place for everybody. But I think that really, if you had a little bit of experience with, which most people do today, with social media and taking pictures of, of themselves, I'm sure they can oh, yeah. take pictures of their own home, so. <laughs> <laughs> but don't put yourself in every one of them. Well, no. It's not a little selfie yeah. living room. Yeah. Selfie That's bathroom. right. My next, uh, my next tip, my next tip, my next suggestion if you're gonna sell your house privately is negotiating. Because yes. you are gonna be emotionally charged and invested. So that's what I think. There's the marketing aspect, which is work, that I like a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work, shifting, changing, pictures, all that stuff we talked about. The second is negotiating. And when you, if you're a seller and you got a buyer staring at you in your eyes, offering you this and you don't, it makes it really awkward and they don't even want to do it. So that's where I love the real estate agent is in negotiating, personally. Yes, that comes with experience. And the other thing is we act yeah. like a firewall or a filter for uh, what can oftentimes be some pretty, um, well, like you said, I guess the correct way to say it would be an emotionally charged conversation that you feel like, well, it's a good thing the other side didn't just yeah, hear what you Yeah, because I don't take it personally. <laughs> We're no. asking 190 and you're asking no. 120 and you want their yeah. piano and their kids yeah. and everything else. Well, yeah. I'm just going to say they're probably not going to do that. I'll go to them. Yeah. You know, I don't take it personally. No, that's you right. You say that to, you're good. like, if yeah. it's my house, I freak out. Oh, Boom, for sure. Like balls, bam, the toenails just flare, everything's yeah. like... Like we're and it hitting, doesn't take much sometimes either war. to get that. Yeah, yeah. And well, we, I mean, we've seen war over a two hundred dollar uh, oil tank adjustment. I mean, it's so <laughs> if yeah. possible, you're, if you're selling pri privately and you don't want to go with an agent, because the negotiating to me is the number one thing. Price right, mm -hmm. the work that's just work. It's just work. Regular marketing work. Yes. The negotiating. Sometimes there's good agents you can't train that. If you can't and don't want to do that, you almost need a buddy or somebody to do the the inner to to do the negotiating in between. Just be a mediator. If you can find a friend or somebody to do the intermediating so the buyer's not looking at the seller and the seller's not looking at the... Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Well, then you're, yeah. But now we're, you know, you're kind of getting on to more and more things you're trying to add in there. Oh, I'm just saying, if you want to sell your house privately <laughs> and you get as much as you can get... Yes, no, I understand. It's yes. work. Yeah. And these are the things you have to realize, yeah. if I don't have a higher professional for it, I'm going to have to do that work. Well, I think that's a point, you really do bring up a good point there, because that's something that people don't realize, is how emotional it can get until the day comes that you have an offer sitting in front of you, or, you know, especially, everybody's going to try and lowball it first, even in a strong market. 
you know, they're going to try, if they know they're not competing against anybody else, they're going to try to get a deal. And sometimes that, that, that attempt to get a deal can be, can be pretty offensive. And to, the closing to the date. The closing date. Yeah. The buyers didn't have their uh, driver's license, didn't have the birth certificate. <laughs> well, <laughs> you should have a list of all that stuff to make sure they have it. But then it might be awkward. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you have your birth certificate? You know, but the yes. agent does all that. Yes, to pre-qualify, and, and most agents don't even work with somebody that's not qualified to buy a home, and that's the other nice thing. Yeah. If you know, you know, if an agent's taking something, there's still some that do, the odd time, and sometimes it's not intentional. But most agents that are out with clients, uh, they don't want to waste their own time either. So that's. Yeah. So we're going to take a second and thank Liberty Utilities, our sponsor, Sherwin Williams, Schluter Systems, Kent. Thank you. So. Jesus, quite a list you got there. I, I know it's guy. Good. Well, you know what it is. Uh, you know what I, I love the natural gas. It, they're they're new Liberty Utilities to uh, New Brunswick. To this area, yeah. They and just I'm took putting over. them in all my houses. That's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> so it's a good sponsorship for me. Not that the others aren't great either. Oh, okay. But that sounds like your primary sponsor. <laughs> well, they keep me <laughs> they keep me warm. Okay. Okay. So real quickly, sum up the private for sale and versus real estate agent. Because I wouldn't let a family member do the the pay the big chunk personally mm -hmm. and and uh, you can call me on it I don't care no it's true I agree I it's, would it's not let a family member or a friend pay the it's big a, chunk certainly a risk to, to put it out and, and with not no have it sell yeah so you tell me the private and the real estate well I think we covered the the private you we went through some good stuff that you know is, is good advice to somebody that's going to attempt it but I think at the end of the day and of course it sounds biased because we're both professional real estate agents uh, both professional realtors is that we have access to marketing tools that the everyday citizen does not have. We have access to databases that the everyday uh, you know, private seller does not have. Mm -hmm. uh, just the marketing, the MLS system, that's national marketing that people can see. And yes, I understand that private sale classified ad websites can be seen from all across the country as well. But especially today and in our region where we see a lot of people that are relocating from west of here, mm -hmm. some people that are retiring and coming here, I don't think the first place they look is on a classified ads website, which you mentioned one earlier. Most of them are gonna to go to realtor.ca and that they're gonna go from there. They may not have a realtor, but that's how they're gonna make their connection to Eastern Canada. Well, that's too how easy. they're exactly. And it's well laid out. It's I mean there's lots of great websites out there, but to me, or at least in my experience and from what I hear, that's typically the route that they take. They may browse some of these websites, that, the other websites that we're talking about, but of course, Realtor.ca is the best known national website okay. of you know, multiple listings. So simply, buyers, I'm making this up, 90% of them are gonna do whatever's the easiest thing in Realtor.ca and all that's easiest. Yep. They will probably check the other ones. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and and uh, now my next thing, I get buyers from different places. Like I don't just wait for Realtor.ca. No, as a real estate agent, you're going to list in multiple places. You're going to use social yeah. media. You are going to use I'm those going to same use those exactly. But I also, I I'm old school. Like I'm telling you, I used to door knock and I, I hand out flyers. I go to into grocery stores and pick up a buyer. I, yes. I would challenge myself. I'd hand out cards to the employees and people. Mm -hmm. And what are you looking for? What are you looking for? And my next big thing to pit, to sell my listings is if the ability to pick up a buyer from a phone call or an email. There's an art to it. Yes. So even if you're selling privately, there's an art to getting that person to email you back after you provide the information. And there's an art to taking that phone call and getting them to deal with you for purchasing any house mm -hmm. and then finding the one that they like. Yes. There's an art to it. There's Absolutely a real there art to it. I think that's an art, not to go off topic, but it's an art that there's a risk of losing, you know, the way, the direction of kind of the interaction, the way it's going today with a lot of it being online, that type of stuff, that that face-to-face -face or more personable voice call on the phone, that's an art that, 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 that is forever going to be important and personal interaction really gives it that personal touch and there's more of an emotional connection, you know, like you said, and that's an art that it can be easily lost, especially in today's generation, is the ability to have that face-to-face -face conversation, the ability to go knock on somebody's door to see if they want to list their house, the ability to call someone that is selling privately and have that discussion with them. And uh, I, I know for a fact you've always been really good at that. I remember my manager when I first started in real estate made that comment about you was that you were very good at converting them. I don't let buyers and slip through the cracks. No, that's true. I don't. Even, you're saying all these other stuff, but there's even the email. 
even getting an email, hey, do you still have yes. 112 Smitherson Street for sale? How do you reply to that? We don't want to get, that'll be another topic. Mm -hmm. We'll do that on another day. But taking that and giving them information and getting them to reply with, there's so many other variables. Yes. Hypothetically, we're gonna end here soon. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna go on forever. But you are selling privately, you get a buyer calls. We love your house, can we come see it? What is the problem with that? That is super exciting. Mm -hmm. You get tingly. Ha, oh, honey, it's great. But for us, what does that mean? Well, you just understand the process. That's just the beginning of the process when you first get that. What are the variables that come into play that yeah. have doesn't even make that excitable. And we probably get a little bit desensitized to that because we see a ton of those emails that, you know, yeah. maybe sometimes never lead anywhere, but of course you follow up on all of them to, to, to hopefully find the one that does. But Give me one one thing right now why that's not a good email. It's not a bad email, but what? Well, what, no, but it could be, yeah, do you know if they're qualified for financing? Amen. You know, that's that's number one for sure. What's another one? Everybody's qualified for financing in their mind. Yeah, you know? true. What's another one? Do they have a house for sale? Yeah, do they have another house to sell? When yeah. are they coming here? Yes. They may love your house, but they're only moving in 2022. Exactly. Because people do that. Yeah. There's so many different variables. Yeah, and you don't know how serious they are yeah. just to begin with. It, it requires a conversation and to qualify them. And yeah. that's so routine for us, I guess, that we take that for granted. So there's the art of taking a lead mm -hmm. and turning it into something positive or, frankly, not positive and not wasting your time cleaning your house, Absolutely. kicking your wife out, getting the kids out, taking the dog, mm -hmm. spraying the couches and everything you do, eliminating it or making it happen. Yeah, and we do the same thing to not waste our time. Exactly. So thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for having me on. And yes. uh, you might want to speak to Liberty Utilities there. It's getting a little cold in here. <laughs> I don't know how good that sponsorship is. <laughs> My feet are freezing. <laughs> you can't. We actually are waiting for. We get our heating system here. Yeah. Well, I think good thing you week. can't feel the temperature through the camera. I know. It looks if, nice if in you here. you noticed, I, uh, nice I put here. my hands. Mine are a little white right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for coming. All right, no problem. Well, thanks for having me. Yes. See ya. Thank you.